So methanol injection data from the dyno is one thing, but how does it work in the real world, like on the track or the street? But in this case, the track, because I'm not an idiot. I'm gonna show you. I am gonna do a standalone video where I compare methanol injection with air to water intercooling, but there is so much data that we got from the meth injection, that's why we're here first. So let's take a look at the time slips of the passes we're gonna be looking at. So going left to right, we have no methanol, then a naturally aspirated hit, followed by three methanol passes. Now I'll be the first to admit that the no meth pass versus the other four passes were at a different track on a different day. However, I've been racing at these tracks for over 30 years now, and I know their foibles, I know their differences, and the only real difference between these two tracks, which happen to be Mason Dixon and Capital Raceway, by the way, is that the 60 foot numbers from Mason Dixon seem to be a little bit more optimistic than from Capital. I don't think there's any difference in actual 60 foot times, but the ET mile an hour, both in the eighth and the quarter mile, are always pretty much spot on. So let's get back to the time slips. All right, so you can tell right away by looking at the no meth pass and sort of the average of the three meth passes that methanol actually does make the car faster. There's no surprise there. We've already proved that with our dyno testing and the deep dive that we did on all of this. And by the way, I'm using an AEM meth kit. It works really well so far. I've been very happy with it. I chose it because of the spray characteristics of the nozzles because we are spraying methanol right into the volute of the electric supercharger. And that's a whole nother thing that I go into in that dyno deep dive video I'll put a link up in the corner I get corner this corner this corner one of one of these corners whatever so check that video out if you want more data on those things looking back at the time slips we can see that the methanol obviously makes the car faster about a quarter of a second faster and about four honest miles an hour faster at this power level, a quarter second and four miles an hour is at least 50 horsepower. It's probably a lot more than that, more like 60 or 70. You know, the old adage of 10 horsepower for a tenth really only holds true in like the 13 second range-ish. You know, low 14s, high 12s. That was back in the 90s when that was fast. Well, it ain't fast no more, as they say. And once again on the time slips, Again, four miles an hour, quarter of a second faster overall. But what does this actually mean in terms of engine performance? And of course, the big question is manifold air temps, but there's so much more going on with methanol injection than just simply manifold air temps. Okay, but let's, let's just start there. So let's take a look at the data log from uh, the no meth pass. So this is it. So the red line up here is boost there's a couple of anomaly spikes here and here but i wouldn't really worry about that but what we want to look at as far as air temperature is concerned or manifold air temperature is concerned is the red line here on the bottom graph again there's like some stray data here i can only assume that this maybe has to do with emf from the electric supercharger i don't know this is very unusual but it really didn't change much in terms of how the car ran or it really wasn't perceptible so let's take a look at the duration of the pass. The white line, by the way, the white trace up here on the top is RPM. This is when it was sitting on the trans brake right here. And then when the trans, when the trans brake was released, that's this flare. And it kind of sits a little bit and then starts pulling up. And let's take a look. So this is a power glide. So our fallback went from, call it 6,250 RPM down to... 5,176 RPM. It's a little over 1,000 RPM. That's pretty good for a glide. Uh, however, we only went through the traps at about 58, 5,900 RPM, which is a little low for this car. But the red line down here is what we're interested in. So this red line here at the bottom is manifold air temperature, and you can clearly see that under boost without the methanol, man, it was getting hot fast. Now, one thing I do want to interject with here real quick is that the LTD is a Fox body, basically like a Fox body Mustang, and they all have their IAT sensors, intake air temperature, also now known as a mat sensor, in the lower intake manifold. So they do have a tendency to do things like get heat soaked. The readings are going to be a little hotter than if it was in the air tube or air inlet tube or in the air box or where the OEMs now generally place these things. You know, remember this is kind of 
80s technology, basically, that we're dealing with. Although, obviously, I've kept the sensors in 80s technology places, but we're using, well, at least 2010 technology for the uh, engine computer. It works. Whatever. Let's get back to it. So the manifold air temperature, which is this trace on the bottom, obviously went up under boost. So let's say the car reacted and started moving right about here, and this pass was what, like a 10-2 or so? Yeah, more or less. All right, it's close enough, right? So this gives us our averages of 6.3 PSI of boost on average, a high of 7.7, .7 and a low of 4.5, which again, I believe is this little downward spike here. But take a look at the mat. It went from 107.8 to 145. This is, again, with no methanol. So we saw a rise of almost 40 degrees. That's pretty significant, and an average of 132.6. Let's jump straight to the data log from the first meth pass. So this is fresh in your mind, this particular shape of this curve and these numbers. And you can see a side-by-side -side comparison of the first meth pass. Now, I'm being very specific about the first meth pass simply because, well, the other passes, the methanol behaved a little bit differently, but not much. Again, same deal. This bottom line here is the mat. So if we go here, and this was like a 10-0, I believe. So, yeah, right about in this ballpark here. So there's your pass. So look at the mat huge difference we start at 108 and go down to 80. now this is where i have to stop you all because a million of you right now well i hope there's a million of you are going straight to the comment section and you're gonna write this but methanol sprays on the sensor and makes it cooler well maybe a little bit but not entirely you have to remember that the flash point of methanol is like 54 degrees fahrenheit whereas the boiling point of water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Our intake temps are above the flash point of methanol, but below the boiling point of water. Now, why am I comparing boiling points and flash points? Well, because water doesn't really have a flash point. A flash point is the point where the liquid gives off vapors that could ignite. Okay, that doesn't mean it's the boiling point. The boiling point of Methanol is somewhere in the ballpark of 150 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know right off the top of my head. I'd have to Google it, and I ain't going to do that right now to stop the video so all this fun can stop. No, we're not going to do that. But even so, methanol starts giving off flammable vapors at like 54 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's basically starting to take gaseous form like Wonder Twins, but instead of water gas, because one of them was always water. <laughs> How many people actually know who the Wonder Twins were? I mean, I don't. can you even have that show like that anymore? Why am I going down this path? Let's get back to the data logs. So there's really no comparison. Let's chop between this graph and the no-meth graph. Meth, no-meth. Meth, no-meth. You get the point. It definitely works. It definitely cools the charge. But let's take a look at the... I don't know. Let's go to the second pass the second pass this was a fun pass yes this was the slowest pass if we look at the time slips you can tell this is the one where it went 10 1 at 136 even but this second pass was the most fun simply because jason sat on the trans brake as you can see look at how it gets as as the boost goes up this red line is boost you can see this spike start the spiking starts to get more and more aggressive and then finally, it peaks at 10 PSI. This is There's a peak of 10 PSI right in here, as I've shown in the How Much Boost Do Electric Superchargers Make video, which was a couple videos ago. But you can see how this gets more and more aggressive, and then he lets the beast go, and immediately, when we go into, you know, once it hooks, there's a little bit of tire spin here, and there's a whole lot of tire spin here. So, made for a fun ride, put up the best mile an hour, which, you know, there's an old saying with drag racers, if you're spinning, you ain't winning, and also, if you're spinning, while well, your mile an hour is going to go up. That is true, but only minimally so, and we see that here. Once again, looking at the time slips, you can clearly see that just happens to be the highest mile an hour of the day. But look at the shape of the mat on this pass. 
it drops like a rock right after the trans brake release and then keeps going. So the way the methanol is triggered in this setup, by the way, it's running, I'm running straight meth, 100% meth, and it's about 30% of our fueling. And I'm just slamming a fixed amount in there because we have a fixed amount of impeller speed in the compressor anyway. So, you know, just let it be what it be. Keep it simple, right? But on this graph here, you can see it's got kind of a funky shape to it. Let's compare this being, again, the wheel spinning second pass versus the first pass where it's more of just a straight line. Let me get myself off of here. So it's more of just like a plateau and then kind of a linear line down. Whereas this goes down on the trans brake, which it does here too, to a lesser extent. You know, I mean, here we are on the trans brake and here's the mat starting to go down and then it just kind of slides down. Whereas opposed to this guy, it went down and then down and then down and then down and finally so at this point by the way it's 78 degrees here at the very bottom it's it's like 63 it's not too far above the actual flash point of methanol weirdly now let's take a look at the third pass by the way so our third meth pass looks like this once again very similar curve and this one center this graph to make it look better let's just do the actual run itself oh he stayed in it a good bit because this was a nine second hit but anyway so here we had a high of 101 and a minimum of 64 and on the second methanol pass 101 to 65 versus 101 to 64.7 i mean come on man that's uh that's pretty darn repeatable results right there and the shape of the curve is pretty much the same as you can see pretty similar it's weird you have that bigger dip and there's also an anomaly here in this last pass by the way as you can see this this little spiky spike the yellow line is the afr curve and something happened here but it's again i believe this to be just an anomaly because it didn't last very long and these things do sometimes happen it lasted just over a tenth of a second so ain't no thing as they say does it work hell yeah it works this is our last methanol hit versus no methanol and as you can see there is just no comparison between the two it absolutely works and looking at the time slips it absolutely makes your car faster Overall, methanol is a huge win. There's some other factors that methanol brings to the table. It gives you all the octane a streetcar like the LTD certainly would ever need. Uh, obviously, the charge cooling is a benefit. Plus, it's an oxygen-bearing fuel, technically. So that brings with it some power. So methanol is a huge win. But how does it compare to air-to-water intercooling? We're going to explore that in an upcoming video. So stay tuned. Give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And thank you for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.